Cool. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the um, the Hasta presentation. You know what? I always turn that light off. I always forget. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's better. That's better. Okay, here we go. Wow. Guess what? Welcome, welcome, welcome. And it's so nice that everything's opening up. Uh, we don't have to wear masks as we don't want to. Um, I'm hoping that every, um, okay, you could not print the handout. The link did not work. Okay, everybody, um, I'm so sorry. We'll get that back out again. It's this, it's just the titles to um, the hostas I'm gonna show. So what I'm doing is I'm showing you a presentation on, on kind of design ideas on how you can plant hostas in shade and ideas on how to use them and plants to plant them with. And then I'm gonna do a second um, um, presentation of show and tell with all the photos of all the hostas that we have here at Chalet right now. And um, so the only handout, it, the handout was only the list of the names. And so you, you'll see that on the, the slide. You can write them down. And I'm going to be talking about what size they get and some of their some of their history, some of their fun history. So um, it looks like, oh, we've got 38 people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, anybody, um, I, what I'll do is I'm going to do the presentation and squeeze it in to um, 45 minutes, and then I'll answer questions, put them in the question and answer column more so than the chat box. It's easier for me to keep track of what I've answered and what I haven't answered. So um, we'll go ahead and, and get started. I was just looking at one other thing, and, and, and we're all set. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, okay, so I'm going to share the screen. And I didn't introduce myself. Excuse me. I'm Jennifer Brennan. I'm the horticulture information specialist here at Chalet. I was the former manager of the Learning Center, and then COVID hit. And so then uh, I've learned to be a Zoom person, <laughs> a webinar person. And you know, thank you all for sticking with us. Um, and it's actually turned out to be pretty good. You know, we're reaching, I think, more people than we ever did uh, with people coming in live and in person. But um, and let's get started. I'm gonna share the screen with, okay, I have to make sure I'm doing the right thing. Here we go. It's working. All right. Okay, and uh, then I just have to go to this. Okay, I have to get to this one thing here. Drat. Hold on, let's do this. 42 people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I just have to, my screen is doing something weird. Okay. Oh, don't do that. There it is. I'm at the right spot. All right. Here we go. All right, and I'm going to put this back up here. Nice. And I put this down, the chat box. Here we go. Shade perennials that love to live with hostas. And uh, boy, doesn't this, doesn't this seem like really nice? Just all the shade and the corridalis and the ferns. And boy, that's, you know, that, that this is, this is where we should all be right now. It's pretty hot and humid out there. Okay. All right. There we go. Oh, I have to do this too. Hold on just a minute. This has to come a different place. I'm going to put it at the bottom of the screen. All right. All right. So it, look at this great, great scene. This was actually out at a botanic garden that I visited when I was on a trip with uh, the Perennial Plant Association. And hostas are great in the shade, but you know they're they're even happier when you pair them with perennials with contracting contrasting textures, colors, and blooming cycles. And I just love all these mi different mixed hostas. This was just uh, just a sight, sight, sight for sore eyes uh, when we were on a tour, and it was. A about as hot as it was as it is today. Um, okay. Oh darn, this is not what I wanted. Sorry, everybody. 
Oh, here we go. All right, now one hosta can complement um, another hosta. And this is a great example of that with this great big, um, sum and substance is the great big one, you know, in, in the top of the screen. And then um, blue moon is the one that's down at the lower portion. Um, okay. And, and then, you know, you've got the, um, the aria marginata down at the base uh, with that blue moon again. And, and then you can, it's wonderful to use them near a tree or a post. The nice thing about hostas uh, in the, under the canopy of a tree is that they don't really compete with the tree roots at all. They're very nice co, you know, co, you know, co, co planters to live together. And um, what I like to do is have one of the beautiful vase shaped types as an accent and then do some of the lower mounding ones around uh, like this, this combination. You can see the, the coral bells tucked in around that sum and substance again. And then, and then with two, um, actually one, two, three shrubs. And, uh, and then there's some daylilies planted in this as well. What a nice, lovely combination underneath that. And that was an oak tree, an oak tree. Now some of the best uh, of the upright ones or Crosa Regal, that the Crosa Regal is over on the on the um, the far left, and I'm going to be showing you more identification slides in the next, you know, the show and tell section. But I just um, you know, Royal uh, Regal Splendor is right in the middle and the upper slide, and it's 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 a cultivar of Crosa Regal, and but it has that the the the, the beautiful edging on the leaves, and that's why they call it Regal Splendor instead of Crosa Regal. You got the name. And sage, I love sage. It's that beautiful blue, blue, green with those wonderful uprights. And what's nice about it is that you can see the stems. You can see that 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 great V shape, you know, with the with the stems. I absolutely love these. Sun power is the one down the very bottom left. You know, you've got that beautiful, um, you know, golden, um, you know, foliage color. And then hosta. Negrescence is the one and, and, and with the, the purple leaf beach on that the, the lower right. You use fine textures to balance the hostas. So the fine texture of the foliage of these, um, these um, uh, Siberian iris contrasts with the, with the upright vertical with a nice broad, wide, you know, you know, uh, you know, hosta. And this one is ready-made. Ready-made is the hosta that, you know, is, that is shown in this picture. Um, then I love, I always love having the alliums, the flowering onions or flowering alliums with the hostas because the, the alliums give that wonderful height and, and, you know, that vertical and then, and then with the, the, the broading, you know, the broad spreading and big leaves, big leaves of the hostas really gives you great interest, you know, in, in a garden. Um, you want to tame the bold, bold leaves of the hostas with the delicate foliage. And um, this is a corridalis um, with those, the, the, this is a white flowering form of corridalis. And, um, and, and I absolutely love it. It, it. You know, they just, that nice, nice soft, soft. It almost looks like a maidenhair fern that's flowering. So, um, so again, these big, bold leaves and with, you know, with that, that the, there's a, a, a wonderful fern in the background too. And another example, um, this is the Alba, Alba marginata with ostrich ferns up against that fence. And, and then they tucked in, I believe that was an impatience down at the bottom. Okay, Japanese painted ferns and heucheras, incredible with hostas because you've got the contrasting colors of that, those burgundies with the greens and whites of the, of, of the hostas. And then I actually even love the silver accents on the Japanese painted ferns because it just draws your eye because of the light, the, you know, the brightness draws into the dark, dark shaded areas of the garden. Okay, a still bees. Ah, still bees are just incredible with, with hostas, and you can get them to bloom at the same time. I love the trick. I learned this from Pam Duffy. She was, um, she is an incredible perennial, um, you know, person. She trained many of us in the business about the joy and love of perennials and 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 enjoying the bloom times. And she trained me that 
you know, really take advantage of Estilbe's. Um, there's, and find your favorite color, whether it's white or the pinks or these dark purples or red. And there's usually one that blooms early, mid-season and late and plant them together in the same area. And you trick yourself into thinking that the Estilbe's bloomed all summer. And this is this is this is finale. And then and then and then with the, that purple flower of the hosta works really nice together just for that that great contrast. And um, OK, and then instead of clumping all the hostas together, you know, you, you, you again mix all the different shade lovers. And this is a great example of a fringed bleeding heart. And that's that's dicentra eczema and it blooms longer it doesn't go dormant like the old-fashioned bleeding heart does um and so you've got that great ferny foliage and then you know the broad you know hosta leaves and then i love how um the the um caladiums and it's an annual in in our gardens that caladium you know it, it gives you that splash of white that really draws your eye you know your eye to it just great. And then, oh, and then down in the very front, you can see um, it's it's one of the um, the uh, the heuchras or the coral bells with the, the frosted cover, you know, on, on it. Uh, you can create a backdrop for the hostas with ground covers. And this is a juga in, uh, off to the side, the purple leaf a juga, and then sweet uh, woodruff. And, and it's, it's, it's gallium odoratum. I love that as a ground cover because of the the whorled pattern of the of of the leaves around the stem. And look at the great contrast of the textures you get, you know, with that. So then also add contrasting colors. So you you the the the, the golden form of creeping Jenny. Is, is the ground cover at the very base. You've got those upright um, vertical stems of the hosta. Um, there's, um, there's a penstemon in there. That's a Husker's red penstemon. And then a, a purple, you know, I think that's purple plum heuchera, you know, at, at, at the base. This is a pretty old slide. Um, so some of the old, old, some of the old goodies, the old goody perennials. Um, this is, um, you know, the beautiful golden, um, you know, hostas with the, the gold color um, um, Hakonikloa or Hakoni grass. And they call that Japanese combed grass that you know, they, they can't cause over. And then, then complement the hostas with blooming plants. Uh, I love the white flowered hostas. Um, the, the, the big white flowers in the back are the, um, the Annabelle hydrangeas. And then there's, there's, there are those wonderful um, red, um, Fanal, F-A-N-A-L, a still be in between breaking up and contrasting it. Just great texture, great color in the garden. And then also pair hostas with shrubs. And, um, you know, these are late blooming um, um, azaleas. And then with those, you know, beautiful, beautiful, large, large leaf, the gold, the gold versions. And then the, um, uh, that's, this is what I think, I think this is sun gold. And then uh, you have the sum and says substance, great big leaf one off to the, the right hand down here. And then again, you know, balance the hostas with the delicate bloomers. Um, one of my favorite combinations, these are primroses, the purple pinky ones are primroses. And then the, the little tiny blue flowers with the yellow centers are Brunera. Or, and I, I, I hate, I hate the, the, um, the common name, it's Siberian bugloss, but Brunera. And the Brunera has those big, this big heart-shaped leaves, you know, heart-shaped, upside down heart, heart-shaped leaves. And they work beautifully with, um, with the, the hosta leaves and contrast very nicely. And again, you know, contrasted uh, bleeding hearts. I love, I always joke that you don't have a true perennial garden unless you have old fashioned bleeding heart in it. And, and the bleeding hearts are just in their prime um, when the hostas are just coming up out of the ground. A great, great contrasting shot. With, with this one. Accent the wall, you know, with, with hostas. This is that great big sum and substance. Um, I always take way too many photos of sum and substance. It's just such an incredible, huge, huge um, hosta. It, it's, it's five and six feet wide, and it gets as tall as, as four and a half to five feet tall. 
just incredible. And then this is mixed with the ornamental grasses. Um, and then you can tame a slope with hosta. A lot of time when you have a slope, it's really tough to mow it. And especially in the shade, they just don't do well. So, you know, with this slope, you can see how it was all planted with just good, good, great, you know, the, uh, the, the, the just beautiful green, green, green hostas. And that holds the slope. Uh, it comes back up every spring and um, is, is just, is just lovely. It, it's lovely. The nice thing is when the hostas dry and die back to the ground, they're the first ones that go down when it, when the hard freeze in the, in, in, in the fall. And then all of the, the, the tree leaves drop. It's easy to get those leaves, um, you know, up off the area before the new hostas come back up in the spring. Okay, fill in the gaps of, you know, uh, in the understory uh, with hosta. And you can see this beautiful um, dogwood with uh, the variegated leaves. And then just underplanting all along this trail with hostas, it just leads the way down the trail. And, and you, with the different colors, different sizes, different textures, it just makes for a beautifully interesting garden. Okay, here's another another example. You can see daylilies with you know with the, with the hosta. A Japanese maple is the tree that's just up you know in the top left. Again, more of the Japanese combed grass down the edge, and then uh, beautiful flowering um, summer you know annuals. Those are those are um, 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 impatience down at the very end of the the row, and then uh, use it in a, a foliage border you know, with uh, these beautiful, there's Japanese maple. Um, I love, um, this is Roger's flower right next to it. The Roger's flower has those, those palmate leaves and they have a beautiful white, white flower. The plant behind that hosta is um, polygonatum or fall Solomon seal. And it's just in the peak of its bloom and the little white flowers hang down off the arching stems and uh, so it's just, well, your eye gets drawn all the way back into it. And then use daylilies with hosta, you know, underneath this beautiful um, multi-stem tree, you've got all those gorgeous daylilies and then edged with, you know, with the white margined hostas. Um, okay, keep going. Uh, Bishop's weed, um, this is Agapodium variegatum. And look how it contrasts with the Rogers flower and, you know, and uh, uh, this, uh, it's ridiculous. I don't have a host in there, but, um, but um, you have to watch out though for the variegated Bishop's weed. A lot of times it will revert back to the regular Bishop's weed and when it's, and it's very, very aggressive. So keep your eyes on it. If you see the green leaves forming, prune those out, just keep the, the variegated ones. They're not as aggressive not as aggressive. Maidenhair fern. Uh, I love maidenhair ferns. Again, this fine, fine, lacy, lacy leaves next to, you know, a, a, the big full hosta. And here it is in another shot. Great color contrast and color echoing the light, light, light fern with the center of that hosta. And then using the big blue leafed with the, the yellow and green leafed varieties makes incredible contrast, pulling your eye in. Okay, as still bees, I talked about these still bees. And you know, this is this is again, uh, this is one of the pink blooming ones. And then the, the my favorite are the white blooming ones. I have all three different of the whites. Creeping Jenny, uh, it's Liz Machia. Um, I hate calling it that because my nickname is Jenny, but, um, but it, it, those beautiful rounded, very small round chartreuse leaves and yellow flowers make, you know, make, create a mat underneath as this wonderful ground cover underneath all of those shade plants. Dead nettle, or that's a horrible name, but Lamium maculatum. Um, it has, there are several different um, cultivars. So there's like Anne Greenaway that has three different colors of variegation. There's a uh, beacon silver that has silvery gray leaves. Uh, and then with white, uh, with, uh, actually beacon silver has silvery overlaid leaves with pink flowers. And then white Nancy has silverly silver gray leaves with green edges. This is white Nancy you're looking at and white flowers. And each plant spreads to three feet wide. It, it's a wonderful, wonderful Oh, I love any of the geraniums. The Cranesville geraniums will flower in sun or shade. Um, Roseanne is one of the best ones. 
um, there, the pink flowering ones are, is, there's one called uh, Ballerina, and then Brookside is a, a great blue one. Brookside was the best blue before Roseanne, and then Jolly Bee and Roseanne are kind of intermixed for each other, and, but great blue, blue flowers. Ligularias, ooh, I love Ligularias. Um, they have those wonderful jagged edges on their leaves that contrast with the smooth edges of the hosta. And then you get these beautiful spikes of um, brilliant, brilliant yellow flowers, even in the shade, even in the shade. Now, this is one of the indicator plants. If it's too dry, man, they let you know, they'll wilt right down, they'll wilt right down. And which reminds me, I need to talk to you about the hostas love a lot of water. So if you're not watering your hostas right now, ooh, do them a favor. As soon as this lecture is over, get out and water them. The coral bells, uh, this is my favorite. This is citronella. I absolutely love this one. And the, the heuchera. And then velvet night. And that's the one that was showing up in all my, all my, my, my photos. I love it because you can see the venation on it because of the silver overlay. And then foam flowers, Tiarella is this a little toppy plant. And uh, they, they, they bloom really regularly with, with spikes of tiny white flowers. And you can see the purple on the other side, the silver on the top showing the venation on the plant. But look how it contrasts with like the, the, the Hakanakloa grass. And then it, and it would contrast with the, the beautiful, large, large hosta leaves. Foamy bells. Foamy bells are a hybrid cross between heuchera and tiarella. So tiarella are, are um, foam flower. And then, and then the heuchera or coral bells. So the nickname for heucherella is foamy bells. Don't you love that? Okay. And then there's the Japanese forest grass or Japanese combed grass, you know, hakanakloa. And they just have these beautiful arching, you know, leaves. And they usually arch to one side. So they call it Japanese combed grass because it looks like it's been combed to one side. And then this is, this is the red leafed uh, form of Rogers flower or Regersia. The flowers are always white but you have these great, great big leaves. I love these because they come up late and this works great with the old fashioned bleeding hearts because just when the, the bleeding hearts are going dormant, the Rogers flower comes up and, and fills in the spot and they're huge. They're absolutely huge, huge. They get to be three and a half to four feet tall and, 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 and they're probably four feet wide. I love this plant. It just fills in so, so well. Here's the Solomon seal or Polygonum uh, biflorum. And look how you can see the detail on the, the, this little, there's two, two flowers at each node. That's why it's called biflorum. And they hang down really nice. Okay. And then um, spiderwort, Trandiscantia. And Kate's golden is up in the upper corner. I just love the straight species. And it can be really vigorous, but it also is a nice plant. It will grow where a lot of things will not grow. Then, and it works with that spiky foliage, beautiful contrast with any of the hostas. This Empress Wu is one of the biggest hostas that are out there. It's, it's five feet tall and, and, and five feet wide. I think the one that, and I'm gonna give you more detail in, in, in the next presentation, but the Empress Rue, the largest one that, that, that they ever um, measured was, and see he's measuring with the yardstick, was 50 inches tall, like four inches shorter than me. When I stand up, I'm 54 inches tall. And, um, and, 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 and then 108 inches wide, incredible. It, 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 okay. And then, um, then this is one of my favorite, Francis Williams, this is a Ciboldiana. And it was um, a hybrid that was, um, that was actually named by a wonderful woman in the, in the Hosta Society named Frances Williams. I have three of these in my front yard. I love them. I absolutely love them. Some in substance. This is the one I kept talking about. Um, some in substance. Um, I, I, every time I see it, it, it's again another one that's almost five five feet tall and six feet wide, and beautiful. That beautiful golden, you know, gold, green and yellow halcyon. I'm gonna I'm gonna do more of these later. So I'm just gonna and sage. Oh, sage is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And, uh, and then stained glass, those are all the ones that are in the front of this one. And then the only problem that you have to really be aware of, this is what you run into in the Pacific North, Northwest, 
aren't you glad you don't live there? Because these are the snails they deal with. Look how big that is. That snail, that snail from the tip of its head all the way to the end of its tail was, um, you know, as, as long as from my thumb to the other side of my hand, it was six inches long. Oh, ugh. Okay, and then, then we do have slug resistant varieties. They usually have thicker, thicker leaves. And um, so like Ciboliana, um, you know, the, the, the variety Elegance, Blue Angel, some in substance, Sage, June, Halcyon, or Innis Woods. Those are the best thick leaf hostas that are, that are, and this is, there's Sage right there. And then look, just look at that when, you know, they're, they're, it's just what great combos here. And then you can see, um, I, I, I love the, the little yellow um, um, poppy. And then just look out, you just wanna take a deep breath and, and, and let it out when you look at those beautiful hostas mixed together. And then they love being around water features. And so it, it, the summer is, as you play off one hosta off the other and set them with other plants, you know, you really make them look their best. And you, you, you'll, you'll discover how easy it is, you know, to make beautiful combinations and balance, you know, accent, you know, it, it, you know is, is, what you, is what you're looking for. Um, let's get out of this one. I'm going to escape this one. And then I'm going to go to, let's get out of here. I'm gonna end this one and then I'm gonna, okay. And then I'm gonna share the screen with the other one. Hold on everybody. Now this is gonna be show and tell fast. Ooh, good and I have lots of time. Okay. All right, here we go. And slideshow. From beginning. Another great combination. And I'm going to move this title thing out of here. Now, oh, I didn't do that right. Excuse me, everybody. I've opened up the question and answer box. I'm trying to, okay. Oh, goodness. All right, here we go. Now, this one, this is called um, the Abiqua, Abiqua Drinking Gourd. And it was selected because of the way those leaves cup up. And it looks like it could hold water. So they called it, and, and, it, and they're huge, huge leaves. And I love this blue, 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 blue color. And it's textured. And you can see you have all that quilted surface. And it was selected because of that as well. These get to be 24 inches tall and can go as wide as 46 inches wide. And I love that the flower, the flower is white on these. And incredible. Okay, the next, okay, come on. Computer. Anne Culpa. Beautiful, beautiful. The, the photo on, on, on the left makes it look like the center stripe is more white. And, and when you look at, at the photo on the right, <coughs> it's more of a contrast. You know, we tried, and there was a strong filter on this camera when this, when this photo was taken. <coughs> Pardon me. So it really made the contrast with the white, white flowers. I love any of the white flowered hostas. I think they really show up well in the shade in the garden. And, um, and, and, and it, they usually say that the white flowered ones are a little more fragrant. Excuse me, but I got a sip of coffee there. Okay, August moon, oh, I love August moon. Look how big those leaves are. It can go 20 inches tall. And, and 42 inches wide. And you can tell those leaves, those leaves are about, they're, they're usually 12 inches long and, and about 10 inches wide. And with that lime, lime green, oh, it just brightens up any area of the garden. And, and, then, and then, and again, with, with this, this one is another one that has white, white flowers. I've always loved Big Daddy. And Big Daddy, you know, I always thought it was, I thought it was the biggest hosta when I first was learning hostas. And it really isn't. It's 25 feet, 25 feet. It's 25 inches tall and, and about 66 inches wide. So it takes up a lot of space, you know, in the garden. It's another one of those beautifully quilted 
very leathery, um, um, uh, you know, hostas. So it's very resistant to slug damage, is slug damage. So um, the one, I got to tell you, the one benefit of the drought that we're having, man, we're not seeing any slugs, n- not at all. So, um, and they usually stay dormant, uh, it, you know, in the soil uh, until the cell warms up. Our cell got so hot so fast that, um, that you know, it, 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 I, I, think, I think it's kind of, really halted the slugs. I really haven't seen that many at all. And I haven't seen slug damage. Now, just because I said that, touch what, touch what, I'm going to get samples all the rest of next week. But I love, again, a white flowering, um, you know, beautiful blue leafed um, hosta. This is my all time favorite. I have six of these in my in my shade garden in the front of my house underneath my huge um, um, honey locust tree. And oh my gosh, these smell like lemon. When, when, you know, when, when the flowers are opening and the foliage, if you rub the foliage, if they smell like lemon. These are, this is my all time favorite. It's called blue angel and they can get 36 inches tall and 85 inches wide. And then their flowers, their flowers are white with a tinge of lavender to them, but so fragrant. Mine are just budding up right now and they're going to be in full flower by next week, you know, by next week. Just an incredible. And it takes up so much space. It's you put one in and half the garden is full. So it's one of those very, very productive plantings that, you know, when 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 you when you plant those in. Blue ivory, Um, blue ivory is is actually an offshoot of blue angel and but not as big it only goes 13 inches tall and 30 inches wide but i love the the variegation on this and it, it's just a creamy creamy yellow just a beautiful creamy yellow and and look at all the different patterns on each leaf no leaf is exactly the same so it's just a beautiful beautiful addition to in any shade shade garden now blue jay this is a newer cultivar and um it it's it's about half the size of the of the blue in the blue ivory to me it looks like an, an a miniature blue angel and it gets to be about 24 inches tall and 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 maybe you know equal spread and 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 then i've got lovely lovely white flowers cherub cherub is uh is a cultivar of 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 actually it's a it's a cultivar of blue cadet and it has the same shaped leaves and this, you know, the same size, and and they tend to stay oh, about eight to ten inches tall, and probably twelve inches wide. Just a lovely, 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 cute little miniature, um, you know, a hosta. Um, yeah, I, I love that one. Now this is one of the small ones. There's a whole mouse ear, ear, ears series, and this was the first blue cultivar of the mouse ears. And these leaves are so cute. They're only they're only about um, you know maybe three and a half inches long, and and possibly two inches in in diameter. So cute just to tuck in under a great big hosta, or you know put as edgers on the front lawn. These are great in containers too. Really fun in containers. And blue mouse ears. I have some other. Oh, brother Stefan. Brother Stefan was. Um, selected by a good friend of mine, Hans Hansen, and um, he named it after his brother. And um, and this is another biggie. I mean, a great big, beautiful, beautiful hosta that has um, has vase-shaped stems. So this gets to be, and it, 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 it stands up over all the other plants in the garden. And this gets to be three and a half feet to four feet tall. And then those leaves, those leaves are, um, 12 inches wide and and probably and, and probably 18 inches long. Ah, oh, just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Yeah, brother, brother Stefan. It was a new introduction. Uh, I think it's just been. I think he introduced it. Well, it's probably been 10 years. I, whenever I think five, it, you know, it's it's probably longer than that. Now, Captain Kirk, Captain Kirk is um, is is another beautiful. Um, variegated form. What's so nice about it is it has this solid, solid dark green edges, and then that 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 kind of neon green center 
it, it looks like a you know, just right down the mid vein. And Captain Kirk, it's not a big host. It's only 23 inches tall, but it goes, it, it, it's about 42 inches wide. So, you know, almost four feet wide. Beautiful in the garden with that contrast. I love the dark green with that gold, with that golden. Now, cathedral windows, um, I, I think I should, I thought this was a cultivar um, of, of blue angel, but I'm, I, I, I can't find my notes on this one. But what I love about this is it, it has those the huge flowers that are fragrant. And Aphrodite is another one that has the fragrant flowers. And the, the, the leaves, the leaves, this one gets to be three and a half feet tall and three feet wide. So you've got that wonderful upright. Okay, Diamond Lake. Diamond Lake was a, a, a newer introduction and it, it has that quilted leaf texture, huge. I mean, big plants. See the person's hand next to this leaf. So when you look at, you know, most hands would be four inches across that palm. And so th this leaf is probably, um, you know, 12 to, to, to 15 inches long and with an equal width, almost, you know, almost, um, beauty, almost beautifully round. And again, very leathery, so very, very slug resistant. Uh, Elegance, Elegance Siboliana, just one of the original um, selections um, of, of blue leaf tostas and been around for years and years. I, I, I think I remember that the flowers on this um, um, are, are actually purple color. Hold on, I'm gonna check that real quick. Um, I have a great source. I went to college with this, with this, with this, with this, this gentleman. Uh, Mark Zillis is his name, and his field guides to hostas are incredible. And I'm going to check elegan the elegans for you. I should have done that beforehand. I'm so sorry. There's so many that I was looking at. That um, that okay. So the elegans. Uh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Um, okay. Oh no no. It has. It's a white flowering one. I should have known that. It's a white flowering. Yeah. Okay. Empress Wu, I sort of gave you a preview of Empress Wu. It says there's the same guy, um, but measuring from a different direction. And then, and then the picture in the front shows uh, the gentleman standing behind the plant and the, the, the plants come up to his, his armpits. And huge, 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 huge. It's one of the largest, uh, it's, it is the largest hosta that is out there. And um, again, the biggest one was measured at 50 inches tall and 108 inches wide. Incredible. And again, leathery leaves with those beautiful white flowers. Now, fire and ice. Ah, oh, this is a gorgeous one. See, it has the lavender flowers. Fire and ice is actually um, it, it is actually a, a, a sport or an offshoot of Patriot. And Patriot is my uh, one of my all-time favorites, but the Fire and Ice it just this has so much more white in it. As a result, it's a smaller it's a smaller hosta. Um, it's only 15 inches tall and 33 inches wide. But look how it just grabs your eye. I, I love this one. And then First Frost is a cultivar of of um, Halcyon, and with that yellow edge, you got that beautiful blue green center and then the, the yellow edge on the side and um and and the first frost it's a shorty it only goes 14 inches tall but it's three feet wide so it has a presence a full presence in the garden francie francie was one of the first white edged um hostas and again thick thick leaves and then the lavender flowers that and they they, they bloom in july in july i love francie and, uh, it, and it actually, it was first selected, I believe, in, in the 1970s. And it's one of the Fortunii um, series of, of, of hosta. And then Francis Williams. Um, and Francis Williams is a sport of elegance. And, um, and that's in the Ciboliana group. And huge, 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 28 inches tall and 63 inches wide. I have three of these in my front bed. And uh, I absolutely love them with that that gorgeous um, blue green with that yellow that yellow contrasting um, um, edge. Okay, here's gold standard, and gold standard is one of the fastest growing hostas. If you want to fill in an area, use the gold standard, and I love it because it's mostly gold, 
with that nice solid green edge. And then the lavender flowers, you know, the lavender, lavender flowers. And this goes 22 inches tall, but 60 inches wide. And uh, again, loves lots of water. Halcyon, ooh, I love Halcyon. It, it, it's just and, you know, another one of my favorites. Um, Blue Angel is my all-time favorite because of the white flowers, but Halcyon has that beautiful, beautiful, it's not as big as the as, as Blue Angel. It's 18 inches tall and only 30, 33 inches wide. So, um, but, you know, again, thick, thick leaves and you know, just beautiful heat wave. Oh, heat wave. Heat wave is a cultivar of, of Halcyon. And heat wave only goes, you know, it only goes um, um, 12 inches tall and 24 to 30 inches wide. And then island breeze. Oh my gosh. L look at this. Look at, it's not striping, but the variegation is so, um, um, you know, variable that it's just, you, you look at the clump and it's just so interesting because you look at all the different, you know, the different color combination and the, and the, the striping on it. Uh, June, oh, June. June's another one of those just phenomenal ones. Um, you know what? I wanted to check. It has the lavender, you know, that, that lav those lavender flowers and it, it blooms in June. So, and, and I think that's, I think that's why it got its name. I should know that. Um, but okay, okay, here we go. Um, and and uh, then there's then there's June fever too. I'm going to show you that one. Okay, June June. Um, this one is um, 16 inches tall and 37 inches wide. And again, blooms blooms in June. That's you know that's where that's where the the name came. Now June fever June fever is you know is a sport you know of um, of June. And so I wanted to show you, you know, June fever is, is the one on the left with the, the, the more um, intense yellow and the bigger area covering the yellow. And it's right next to June. So I put these together so you could see, and you could see the, um, you know, the, the difference. And June fever, it, they get about the same size, 16 inches tall and, and 30 inches and 30 inches wide. Okay, I'm watching the time. Okay, um, so yeah, it's um, we're, I'm doing great. Crosa regal. I was talking about that earlier, and this is one of the I mean beautiful uprights. You know, and and I love when you can see you can see the stems and they kind of look V shaped. And um, so Crosa regal, again, uh, they call it a, a vase shaped mound. And, uh, and it has this powdery blue foliage, which is just lovely out, out in the garden. And, uh, and it, it can go 33 inches um, tall by 70, by 70, 71, 71 wide. And, and I, I absolutely love this. There's, an, there's a, a cultivar of this called Victory uh, that, um, that um, my friend Mark Zillis you know, selected and hybridized himself. And I have a couple of those in my garden. I absolutely love them. And um, so, okay, that, now the next one, next one is Liberty and, and um, beautiful variegation. I, I love the flipping and flopping of having the green in the center and the, and the yellow on the outside, or you have the yellow in the center and green on the outside. It's nice to pair those in, you know, for, 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 for nice, nice contrast in the garden. And what's nice about these, look how the, the leaves, are you know are really um, heart shaped you know in in you know this again very 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 tough thick thick leaves so they 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 don't get they don't get they don't get riddled with holes from you know from you know from this from the slugs and Liberty goes um, twenty six inches tall and sixty three you know sixty three wide okay Maori buttercups. This is a sport from, um, you know, from, um, from, from Liberty. And you can see just almost solid, solid neon, neon, neon green. I love it when it goes into flower. And this has, this has again, those lavender flowers that go with it. Now I better guess. Okay, here's another one of the, the, the mouse ears series. And this is Mighty Mouse. It's a little bigger, you know, it, it's, you know, it's a little bigger than, than the original mouse, the mouse ear series. Um, this one gets probably 12 inches tall and 12 inches and 12 inches wide. Mini skirt. What's fun about this one is it, it has a crinkled edge. And then you can see the, you know, those, the, the lavender flowers in it. 
And, and I love how tight the edges, the, the edges are as far as the variegation goes. It's just, a, you know, that, that solid, 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 solid line, you know, right, 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 down the, right down the edge. Okay, and Old Glory, oh, Old oh Glory. I love this one. I, I, I absolutely love Old Glory. Um, solid, solid. Let me, I'm trying to find the details on it. Um, I, I, I first discovered, I think this one's been around for a, about 15 years. Hold on just a minute. Um, hold on, hold on. Um, yeah, here we go. Yeah, there's a whole series of these that went like with the night before Christmas. And um, here, let's keep going. Orange Marmalade, again, in the same series. And, and this was another one that was hybridized by, um, by, by Mark. And Paradigm, beautiful, quilted and variegated. 33 inches tall by 40 inches wide. And then, oh, there's Patriot. And I, man, I keep saying this, I, I, when these pictures come up, these are my favorite, these are my favorite. I guess I should say my top three favorites are um, Blue Angel and then, uh, and then Francis Williams and then Patriot. I love how in, how this makes such an impact in, in, in the garden. I just added about four more of these on my front shade bed uh, because it just, you know, it just, it draws your eye all along. And it's a very pale lavender, almost, almost white when they're in flower. I'll actually leave these flowers up. And then Prairie Sunset, gorgeous, gorgeous, a little smaller, has kind of a crinkled edge leaf. Um, this one gets to be 22 inches tall and about 30 inches wide. And then praying hands, praying hands is, you know, they, because the hands are held up and, and then, and then cupped like that. That's where the name praying hands comes from a smaller hosta only, you know, only, but only about um, 15 inches tall and 15 to 18 inches wide. And when it's in flower, really fun, just fun for the front edge of the beds in the shade. And then rainforest sunrise, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. 36 wide and 24 tall. And then rainbow's edge. This actually uh, was the is the 2021 hosta of the year. And look how shiny the foliage is, and smooth it is. It's very very leathery. And then and then you just get that that variegation is just spectacular. And I love the green is dark, dark green. And then the yellow is, I mean, true yellow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Oh, and Regal Splendor. Regal Splendor. Again, those are those wonderful, you know, V-shaped uprights. And, um, you know, it, it just, you know, I, I love, I love the, the just very fine yellow edge on this. And look how when you, when you pair it with, that uh, that Hakoni grass, the, the 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 gold Hakoni grass, it just makes your eye follow the edge of that you know the regal splendor, beautiful beautiful. And then Royal Standard, um, I love Royal Standards because it's it's in the very fragrant 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 um, pasta group, and um and this was down. These are photos that I took God years ago, down at the, the Missouri Botanic Garden. And they had this huge, big lawn area with this whole big planting of Royal Standard. And when it's in bloom, uh, the fragrance is, is almost intoxicating. It, it's just, it is absolutely, I remember the first time I saw this, I, I, I was totally amazed. And these go, these go 63 inches wide and they're 26 to 30 inches tall. And, um, Beautiful, fragrant, fragrant, fragrant um, white flowers. Oh, 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 yeah. And this is in August. It's the very end of the season. So um, really, 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 you know, really excellent. And, and, oh, and this was actually the first patent in, pat, it was a patent on this hosta. It was the very first one that ever had a patent. It's been around that many years. I was trying to see how many years ago. Um, and, and I, I, I don't, I don't remember. On Sage, oh, oh man, I'm gonna say it again. Here's another one of my favorites, <laughs> Sage. Um, we did uh, one year. Um, we did a, a garden down at um, Navy Pier, 
uh, and our, our landscape division. Oh no, I don't. Was it Navy Pier? Was it the Chicago Flower and Garden Show? I, I forgot. I think it was Chicago Flower and Garden Show, and um, we used sage in you know in the um, in 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 the planting. Oh, people went nuts over it because they had to be forced early. So it had to be the flower and garden show, and so we we had to force them early, and and we did a we did a great job. And just look how look how spectacular these are, and these go 30, 31 inches tall tall, and and as as wide as seventy inches wide, incredible, and especially with um that that blue 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 uh, blue green. And then, uh, and then with that, that yellow edge, you know, again, just, just, you know, I, I, and I think, I think I was thinking this was related to Royal Standard, but I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Sage is just Sage. Okay. And then here's another one of the mouse series. This is called, you know, this is the mouse series and this is school mouse. And, and this is really cute. See how the, the, the edges of the leaves are undulated. So it gives that fun kind of texture. And then, and then I, I love, there's a little bit of a white edge on it and then the neon and then, and, and then the, the blue green. Stained glass, another another um, really nice size, fast growing, fast growing hosta, um, stained glass, and you just can't beat you can't beat the the yellow ones. The the yellow ones can actually take um, a little bit more um, sunlight, um, you know. So you can put them on the edges you know, of the gardens that might get, you know, like afternoon, you know, sun or morning sun and afternoon shade. And um, I was looking for this one too, stained glass. I love this. I love this one. Okay. And um, sting is new. I think it was just introduced three years ago and a, a small, small plant. It only goes 24 inches wide and, and 18 inches tall. And with that very tight, tight, um, and that very tight, tight um, 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 variegation. And what's nice about it is the veins are so parallel on it. Oh, uh, here's some in substance. This is the one I always joke about taking too many. Back, I'm giving my age away. Back when we had film, I used to get so mad at myself because I would use up too many shots from my roll of film on some in substance. And I would have to chastise myself saying, you took two pictures of this yesterday, don't waste any more film on it. And boy, digital photography has changed, has really changed all that, hasn't it? Um, oh, stained glass, I was looking for stained glass. Yeah, 20 inches high and, and 45 inches wide. And it's a sport, oh, it's a, stained glass was a sport of guacamole. And then some in substance, uh, some in substance um, is, I mean, here we go. Some in substance, 31 tall and 70 inches, 70 inches wide. And uh, it's a massive, massive mound and, uh, and with huge leaf sizes, you know, and that, that chartreuse is just spectacular. And what's nice with the purple flowers, the chartreuse and purple, really lavender, go, they go together very nicely. Water slide, this was new. This is new just in the last, I think, four years. And so with the undulating leaf edges, they're doing a lot more um, selection with those undulating leaves. And that's how water slides are. You know, they, you know, they're, they're, they go up and down, up and down. So that's why, and then, and then this is this kind of a gray blue, you know, and so it looks more like water. So water slide, okay. Oh, whirlwind, whirlwind. I forgot who did this one. Whirlwind, um, and I was so glad to see when, you know, when, when we got this one, we got this one in in our order. Um, I, I thought this was a real fun one, and yeah, whirlwind. Um, this one um, was also done by John Culpa, who who selected the Ann Culpa um, hosta, and it has the greenish in, with white centered foliage, which is pretty unusual. And it's a medium, medium large mound. And again, lavender, lavender flowers. This goes 19 inches tall and 40 inches wide. Oh, wide brim. Oh man, I forgot about wide brim. Um, wide brim is um, just huge. It's an ab absolutely huge, huge plant. I always forget about this one. And um, um, yeah, again, lavender flowers heavily, heavily flowered. 
and and that's why people people absolutely love it, you know love it and again um, this one this was 36 tall and and probably 60 wide so wide brim and they're talking about not because the plant is so wide they're talking about because the edge is it's like a wide brim on a you know on a hat and boy i did it i can't believe it we've got five minutes till one and uh, I, I was, I thought this was really brave of me to do two different PowerPoint presentations, but um, I, I, I couldn't resist putting this path and, and thanking you for walking down the Hosta Trail with me today. So I'm looking to see, I've got several questions. So let me just pull those up. We'll keep, we'll keep the trail here. Um, here we go. Okay, this is from Cheryl. Does Shelly carry all of these different hostas for sale? Yes, 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 Cheryl. I made sure that the only hostas I featured in the presentation today were ones that we either have in stock or we have the orders that have come in last week and this week. So all of these are, are here at Chalet. So I made sure I made sure that that happened. Instead of showing you all the fun, I mean, there's so many. Okay, look at this book. Look how thick this book is. Look, look how thick this book is. Look, that's how many hostas there are. And I think, I think, I think Mark said that he had over 5,000 in this featured in this book. So there's, it would be impossible to show you all of them. Okay, so thank you for asking that question. All right, and um, okay, so the next one is from Carolyn Parker. What does slug damage look like? Ooh, wow. Okay, I have holes in a mini chartreuse green hosta. I have soft flies that are eating my creeping jenny. Okay, slug damage are holes in the middle of the leaf and they can be they can be round ones that are as small as a quarter of an inch. They can be pinhole size if they're baby slugs. And they can be whole sections in between the veins. They hate eating the chewy parts of the leaves. So they won't, they usually don't eat across the, the veins, but they'll eat all of the, the tissue in between the veins. And they rarely do holes from the edges. If you have holes from the edges, that's usually from rabbits or insects. And then the soft flies, yeah, yeah, the soft flies are going after the creeping jenny, you know. So you want to use an insecticide on the, on the creeping jenny, and then for the slugs, you want to use Sluggo. It's a problem, a product called Sluggo from the Monterey Company, and it is iron phosphate, and it's embedded in these little pellets that are made from flour, sugar, and water. And slugs can't resist the flour and the sugar, and so they're attracted to them. And all you have to do is sprinkle one tablespoon every three square feet underneath your ear, underneath your hostas. And the slugs are attracted to it. They eat it, it kills their appetite. They don't eat anymore. So it stops the damage immediately and they crawl away and die someplace. You're not fishing them out of stale beer. It is the most civilized way to take care of slugs. So sluggo, and there's also a sluggo plus if you have um, soil borne insects that are eating leaves. And it, it, the active ingredient of that is spinosad. So, so yes, I should have had a picture of that. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, now Sue, um, there's Sue uh, Rosenbacher. Do you, you uh, do you have a photo of Hui Hasta, my favorite? No, I do not. I'm so sorry. And it's because we don't carry it. So if we don't carry it, I'm not going to tempt you. I'm not going to tease you with it. Okay, and and okay, then Regina Dawson, Dawson. Do all of these hostas do well in Zone Seven B? Yes, they they would do well in seven B. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, great questions! You guys have great questions. Okay, um, and then here we go. Here's Susan. Um, what causes hostas to get somewhat root or uh, root bound and seem to be deteriorating? Okay, um, Susan. Um, the um, there is a, um, a a fungus when it's this hot. That it's called southern blight, and it, it it was in the soil last year. This year it hasn't been wet enough. But if you're watering your hostas on a regular basis, and the southern blight got um, active um, last year, uh, I've had three people bring samples in, and it looks like someone has just 
chopped the hostas off right at the ground level and it just cut right where the stems are. And it's because that fungus rots those stems off and they just fall flat. And, and it looks like someone has done a mean trick and cut all your hostas off. But that, um, that's called Southern Blight. And you need to use a fungicide on it and, um, and dig up the soil, remove the soil before you replant another one. And, you know, but before you, you know, you do that, um, you know, you know, send me a photo and I can, I can, I can definitely um, diagnose it from that. Okay. And then uh, Regina has another question again, Regina ha, ha, Dawson, uh, you put iris and daylilies with the hostas. Don't iris and daylilies need to be in the sun? Actually, the, uh, the Siberian iris and daylilies are, are are shade tolerant. There are a lot of daylilies that can that can tolerate that. So so the Siberian iris and and many of the daylilies will work beautifully in the shady part sun part shade conditions that hostas love. So that was a that was a great question, Regina. But yes, you, they really work. They work beautifully together. Okay, and then here's Usha. In this picture, uh, how does hosta growing in the ground cover? It looks like creeping. Vinca, does this not smother the hosta? Let me check. Let me check. I, I was just looking at hosta rather than, uh, you know, it it is it is vinca vine, and um and and it you know it 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 works fine. It works fine. This is watered very well. Um, this area was um, actually it's a, a a public garden, and they had sprinkler systems in the Usha. So as long as you keep them well watered, it it works fine. It works really fine. Uh, and then here's Kathy uh, MV. Uh, what would be the best hosta for sun? Ooh, gosh! You know what? I'm not going to answer that right here. I, I have I have on my notes, and I I don't want to I don't want to just blurt out that. So Kathy, do me a favor and email me at Jennifer B. It's Jennifer B. J E N N I F E R B at shallynursery.com, and I'll send you I'll send you my notes on the best the best hostas for sun. Okay, and there's there's some there's some really good ones that will do what will do well. Okay, so everybody and Usha, thank you for thanking me. Um, you all were you all were great, and uh, it looks like it looks like it looks like I have a couple of chat box things. Let me just check those. Oh no, I guess not. Oh yeah, there's a chat box. Here we go. Uh oh. Oh, there it is. Okay. When is the appropriate time to split and transplant hostas? Um, this is. Uh, I'm gonna pop this up. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, oh, Carolyn, what a nice comment. Lovely like a watercolor. Thank you. The appropriate time to split and transplant hostas is usually first thing in the spring before they're late. They wake up late. They're like teenage boys. And uh, so they sleep late. And so it's best to, to divide them, you know, just as they're coming up um, early in, um, you know, early, early in, in, in the spring. And let me, I just pop this chat box down. Hold on just a minute. Okay, so yeah, that's the best time. But I gotta tell you, houses are pretty tough. You can usually divide them anytime. This summer though, with this extreme heat, I, I wouldn't do it now. I, I wouldn't do it now. I, I would wait till at least, um, at least August and do it before, before September 15th. Um, but ideally, it's it's early early in the spring, um, just before they start coming up, you know. And and, and they usually don't wake up till the end, middle of May, or you know, or, or the, the early or mid May. So that's the best time to to, to to divide them. Good question. Okay. And do you do you like pasta <laughs> uh, from Cindy? I love it. I couldn't tell. Just kidding. Thanks for the great presentation about my favorite type of plant. Oh, nice, nice joke. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah, I do love hostas. Isn't that funny? You, 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 I love it. Thanks, 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 thanks for thanks for thanks for uh, you know joking with me. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, here's um, uh, Anne Berkeley. Thank you, Jennifer. Very helpful in IDing the varieties I have. Uh, planning to mix it up with some perennials, as you mentioned. Perfect. I love that. And Chris, director, I love hostas and have a bunch. Thank you so much for a great show. Oh, Chris, thank you. And then here we go. Um, okay, and okay, I'm going to leave that one up. I'm going to get rid of this one and I have a couple more and then I think uh, Chris it's great to hear from you thank you so much and is do hostas do better if if you do divide them well you know what um what hostas do 
they'll really give you that donut hole effect uh, is, you know, the center will die out and they just keep growing, growing, growing out on the edges. And, and that, you know, that kind of, you know, makes you divide and, you know, and spread them. Um, they, they work so well, though, that I have a whole group of them at the front of my house that I've never divided. And they just kind of keep moving out and you know, kind of filling in. Um, I did divide a blue cadet that was just overgrown and it was in an, an area of my garden where a tree came down and so it was in more sun than it should it should have been and so last a year ago in the spring i dug up the clump and it was probably it was probably uh, it was 18 inches in diameter i dug up the clump it was so tightly rooted because of growing in heavy heavy clay that I had to use my pruning saw and I just divided it like a pie. I cut it in half, I cut it in quarters and each quarter I cut in like a section, like an eight. And I planted the whole area next to a walkway on the north side of my house. And these little blue cadets are wonderful. I was just watering them this morning and I'm so proud of them because they, uh, each of those quarters has filled in and they're not taking over and they're not, they're not growing into the walkway. So, so it, you know, they really do beautifully if you divide them. So thanks, thank you so much. And Cheryl, thank you for thanking me for such a great presentation. I, I really appreciate it. And with that, we're five minutes after uh, the hour and um, I'm just going to sign off everybody and tell you thank you thank you thank you for um, for tuning in uh, it, it's it's always my pleasure and thanks for letting me talk about something I love anyway okay and I'm getting rid of the uh, getting out of my oh I'm going to stop sharing the screen and then just wave goodbye to everybody. And um, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye for now.